Class 12 Accountancy Presented by Edixit.com In this video, we are going to provide Accounting for Partnership Basic Concepts Partnership Deed In the previous video, we discussed about the nature of partnership and essential features of partnership. We also learned that when two or more partners join hands and make an agreement, then the partnership comes into existence. Without agreement, there is no partnership. Yeah, this agreement can be either oral or it should be written. Either way, there should be an agreement. The Partnership Act did not make it mandatory that the partnership agreement should be in writing itself. But when this agreement is prepared in the written form, the document in which this agreement is written contains all the terms of agreement. We call this document as partnership deed. When two people are entering into an agreement, especially into a business agreement, there will be so many factors that they should agree about. This document contains all the aspects which affect the relationship between the partners. Some of them are details about objectives of the business, Whenever the business is started, it should have some objectives, right? Something like we should increase our products or services market share, we should reach 10 lakh product sales, and also to increase the customer service. If it is a food service, if it is currently taking 15 minutes to process every customer order, we should reduce it to just 10 minutes. These are a few of the objectives of the business. The partnership deed contains this. One more detail that will be part of the partnership deed is how much capital is contributed by each partner. Something like partner A contributed 15 lakh rupees and partner B contributed 23 lakh rupees, etc. It should have these details. The ratio in which the partners should share the profits as well as losses. If there is any interest on the capital, how much interest each partner would get? Apart from the capital, if any partner has given any loan, the partnership deed contains the details of how much interest is paid on the loan, etc. Now, these details are called as clauses. This is a clause, this is a clause, this is a clause, this is a clause, and this is also a clause. Now, once this agreement is prepared, is it possible to make any changes in any of these clauses? Yes, it can be done. But, for that, we need the approval or consent from all the partners. If any partner has any concerns, then the changes in the partnership agreement cannot be done. Once all the provisions to be included in the partnership deed are confirmed, it is important that the partnership deed is properly drafted. That means that there will be some specific terms related to each clause. For instance, you cannot just say that the partner A should get 20% of the earnings. This may not be the proper way of defining it. You should use the wording something like partner A's profit sharing ratio is 20%. That might be the correct way of drafting this clause. This is what I mean when I say that the partnership deed should be properly drafted. One more thing that is worth mentioning here is the Stamp Act. This stamp act contains certain provisions. The partnership deed should be prepared as per the provisions of the stamp act. And now, the registrar of firms comes into picture. Once the partnership deed is prepared, it is preferred that it should be registered with the registrar of firms. It is not necessary that the partnership deed should be registered with the registrar of firms. However, if it is registered, there are some legal rights that the firm and the individual partners can get. Something like, one partner can sue other partner or the firm or so on. If the registration with the registrar is not done, the partners don't enjoy these legal rights. So, if they want these legal rights, they should register with the registrar of firms. Now, let's discuss about the contents of the partnership deal. It contains the information related to the firm, like name and address of the firm, and its main business like whether it is in manufacturing or transport etc. These details should be provided. 
The next thing is names and addresses of all the partners. Suppose that there are four partners in a firm. His name, his name, his name and his name. His address, his address, his address and his address. The next thing is amount of capital contributed by each partner. Like partner A contributed 1 lakh rupees. Partner B contributed 3 lakh rupees. Partner C contributed 2 lakh rupees. Partner D contributed 5 lakh rupees, etc. The next thing is the accounting period of the firm, whether it is 3 months or 6 months or 9 months or 1 year. For instance, if it is 1 year, they should also specify whether it is from January 1st to December 31st or from April 1st to March 31st, etc. The next thing is the date on which the partnership is committed. The next thing is rules regarding the operation of bank accounts. For example, they can have a rule like if the amount to be spent is more than 50,000 rupees, then it requires approval from all the partners, etc. The next thing is profit and loss sharing ratio. Something like this much for this partner and this much for the other partner, etc. Usually, this is specified as a ratio. The next thing is rate of interest on capital. Sometimes the partners can demand that they should be paid certain interest on their capital. For instance, if partner A has contributed 1 lakh rupees of capital, he may be provided with 10% interest per annum. Similarly, if there is any loan from the partner, the rate of interest on the loan should also be included in the partnership deed. Sometimes the firm might take a loan from one of the partners. As the partner is giving the money to the firm in the form of loan and the firm is paying interest on the loan, those details should be provided. Note here that the partner might have contributed some loan. In some cases, there might be a loan given by the partner on top of the capital contributed by him. It is important that you understand the difference between the capital contributed by the partner and also the loan given by the partner. Capital will stay with the business and the loan has to be returned to the partner. There is a difference. In addition to this, as the business is running, some partner might need some money. So, he might withdraw some money from the firm. The firm can collect an interest from the partner for this drawn amount. The details of this interest should also be specified. The next thing that should be part of the partnership deed is mode of auditor's appointment. Sometimes the firm might require an auditor from outside. In that case, they should specify the mode of appointment of the auditor. The mode of appointment of the auditor is beyond the scope of our discussion. But for now, just understand that the partnership deed contains this information, if any. The next thing is, sometimes some partners might work for the firm. In such cases, their salaries should be specified in the partnership deed. Sometimes, if any of the partners bring contract or business for the firm, he might be paid a commission. So, such a commission, either lump sum or percentage should also be specified. Note that such payments are not mandatory. They should be specified only if they are payable to any partner. Now, it's not necessary that all the partners are experts in the same field. One partner might be an expert in finance related matters and the other might be an expert in sales and marketing. So, the rights, duties and liabilities of each partner should be documented in the partnership deed. One more thing that should be included in the partnership deed is, if there is any loss to the business and this loss is majorly due to a specific partner, there should be clear guidelines regarding how this loss is handled. So, the partnership deed should contain the details of the treatment of loss arising out of insolvency of one or more partners. Now, one more thing that we need to consider is that it is possible that the firm might wind up or dissolve after being in business for some time. In such cases, how are we going to handle the settlement of the accounts and dissolution of the firm? The next thing is, as discussed earlier, when there are partners, there might be disputes. The method of settlement of disputes should also be documented in the partnership deed. And the next thing is, over a period of time, 
there might be a new partner admitted into the firm a partner might be no more interested and might retire it is also possible that a partner might expire the rules to be followed in case of admission retirement or death of a partner should also be documented in the partnership deed in addition to this if there are any additional details that are specific to the firm something like what to write as etc in writing right any such other matters related to the conduct of the business should also be documented there is a whole lot of information that lies in the partnership deed so the partnership deed should cover all the matters affecting the relationship of partners among themselves however if there is something that is not documented in the partnership deed then the provisions of the indian partnership act 1932 should be referred and the matter should be handled accordingly for instance if the partnership deed is silent about the salary of a partner and if any partner demands a salary then as this clause is not documented in the partnership deed we should consult the indian partnership act 1932 so as per the indian partnership act 1932 if a partnership deed is silent about the salary of a partner then no salary should be paid to the partner that's how we resolve this dispute from all of this discussion it is clear that when preparing the partnership deed the provisions of the partnership act play a significant role so let us discuss the provisions of the partnership act relevant for accounting the first one is profit sharing ratio so when there is nothing specified in the partnership deed how can you decide in what ratio the profits or losses should be shared among the partners the relevant provision in the partnership act says that the profits or losses should be shared equally by the partners suppose one partner contributes 1 lakh rupees and the other partner contributes 2 lakh rupees here one partner contributed more than the other partner but still the profits or losses should be shared equally so if the profit is 20000 rupees each partner gets 10000 rupees not in their capitals ratio the next provision that is relevant for accounting is interest on capital a partner can get interest only if it is explicitly specified in the partnership deed otherwise none of the partners are entitled to get an interest on the capital so if the partnership deed is silent about the interest on capital that means that there is no interest to be paid on the capital the next provision that is relevant for accounting is the interest on drawings just like there is no interest on the capital there is no interest on the drawings also however if it is explicitly specified in the partnership deed the interest should be paid on the drawings however if the partnership deed is silent about the drawings then there is no interest to be paid on the drawings the next provision that is relevant to accounting is the interest on loan if any partner has given loan to the firm then that partner is entitled to receive an interest on the loan in other words it becomes his legal right to receive the interest on the loan the interest on the loan should be specified in the partnership deed if it is not specified in the partnership deed he is entitled to receive an interest of 6% per annum the next provision that is relevant to accounting is the remuneration for firm's work sometimes some of the partners might provide their time and services to the firm however just because they are providing the time and services they will not be entitled for the salary or any other kind of remuneration yeah if it is explicitly agreed that a specific partner should receive salary or commission or any other kind of remuneration then it should be paid to them otherwise if the partnership deed is silent about this aspect then they will not be paid anything for their time or effort or services in addition to these provisions it is worth considering the following points as per the indian partnership act consider the case wherein the partner did some transaction of the firm and gets benefited for example he granted a big order to a supplier and the supplier paid him big commission for giving him business the partner should deposit that commission with the firm 
In another case, he used the vehicles belonging to the firm to help a friend or relative who is moving to a new house. The friend pays the partner. The partner should deposit that amount with the firm. In another case, he uses the business connection of the firm. Here, the business connection means the people like suppliers, vendors, or any other stakeholders who are associated with the firm. The partner uses this connection and gets some job done for his relative or friend. And the relative or friend pays him. The partner should pay the firm because he has used the business connection of the firm and got profited. Consider another case wherein the partner is carrying out the same business as the firm. For instance, the firm is supplying stationery to XYZ client. The partner also sells stationery personally to XYZ client. In this case, he should pay all the profit made by him to the firm. Consider another case wherein the partner is running the same business as the firm. For instance, the firm is in the business of transporting goods to the client XYZ. The partner uses his other business trucks and transports the goods for the client XYZ and gets paid. In this case, the partner is running a competitive business same as that of the firm and hence as per the Indian Partnership Act, he should pay all the profit earned by such business to the firm. That's all about the partnership deed. With that, we have come to the end of our discussion about partnership deed. In the next video, we'll discuss about special aspects of partnership accounts, maintenance of capital accounts of partners, and differences between fixed and fluctuating capital accounts. Thanks for watching. Edixit.com is started to promote effective and efficient learning process to help the students with their learning requirements. To watch all our videos, please subscribe to our channel. Also, please click on the bell icon to receive a notification as soon as a new video is published. Please click on the like button if you like this video. Thanks for watching.